All right, welcome back to another episode of Bears Guide 205. Today, we're talking about the causes of state division. So this is kind of the culmination of everything in the story so far that we've talked about in this unit. We've talked about, you know, the difference between race, ethnicity, and nationality. We've talked about how certain ethnicities or nationalities have this idea of self-determination, and they want to govern themselves and have their own country and have sovereignty. Uh, we've talked about how... Uh, stateless nations have levels of autonomy. Um, we've talked about centripetal and centrifugal forces and how they affect a state. And then most recently, uh, talking about the impacts of colonization and those impacts, the long lasting impacts on those countries. But now in the story, we're at the point where it's like, okay, countries have gone through all these things. Countries are either a multi-ethnic or a multinational state. And the centrifugal forces are too strong at play. And now we're talking about countries breaking apart. And we're talking about how, not only how countries break apart, but how do countries prevent breaking apart? Quick review, nationality, political allegiance to a group or state, ethnicity is your cultural allegiance, a nation state is when your borders match your ethnicity. That means 90% of people or more in your country are of the same nationality slash ethnicity. An example uh, is, the, is Denmark, where everyone's a Dane. And then you have multinational states where you have more than one nationality. That means a group of people have an allegiance to themselves instead of the state as a whole. Think of the UK because, you know, when you ask someone from the UK, well, who are they a citizen of? They don't say they're a UKer. Say they're Irish, Scottish, English, or Welsh. And then finally, multi ethnic state, where you have more than one ethnicity, but everyone has the same allegiance to one state. So, m notable multinational states uh, Belgium, Spain, the United Kingdom, Canada. We've talked a lot about these. We're going to go more in depth on these too. And when a nationality within a multinational state wants the right to govern itself, to have its own state, it's that whole idea of self-determination. This is all review. And groups that want to rule themselves are considered a stateless nation because they don't have control of their territory yet, right? The Quebecois in Canada, they are considered a stateless nation with a whole lot of autonomy, but they don't, con they don't control their country yet. The same as the Kurds. They're a stateless nation. They have no autonomy, but they eventually want it. And what is sovereignty? This is the goal for all peoples, the right to govern yourself without other countries telling you what to do, right? And remember, colonies do not have this. So what the heck is devolution? Now, this is a complex topic that we're really going to delve deep in. So multinational states, which have nations with self-determination, may undergo this process of devolution. Devolution is the process of that country giving power to those nationalities within a state. So I know that that sounds wild. So we're going to use the example of the UK to start because really there's two levels of devolution. There's minor devolution and there's major devolution. So in the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom government wants all four nationalities to stay part of the country. They need all four nationalities to make that country run. So what the UK does is, you know, Scotland starts talking about, you know, I really don't like being a part of this country anymore. I want to, you know, this idea of self-determination, we want sovereignty, we want to go make our own country. And the UK doesn't want to lose Scotland. So what do they do? They give them some power. They give them some autonomy. They devolve power to them. And that is minor. So where you have the UK and you have the four nationalities, the UK is going to give government power and autonomy Maybe ideas like, hey, Scotland, you have the power to control taxes in your region. You have the power to control police funding in your own region. You have the choice to choose how education works in your own region. And then Scotland goes, you know what? Those centrifugal forces that were pulling us apart, thanks for devolving power. We'll stick around and stay, right? This is an example of minor devolution. And all minor, devol uh, minor devolution is an attempt to keep those nationalities part of this multinational state by giving them some power, by giving them some autonomy. Now, they're still a stateless nation. They do not have sovereignty. They just have more autonomy. And why would the UK devolve power to these nationalities? I kind of just answered that for you. Is basically, they want them to stick around. 
So major devolution. So sometimes that just doesn't work out, right? Sometimes you can't devolve power and then they're like, you know what, this is good. Sometimes they're like, that's not enough, we gotta dip. So there's two major devolutions that you gotta know. The first one is Czechoslovakia turning into the Czech Republic and Slovakia or Czechia now, and then the state of India. Because while the British had colonized India, after they left, they cut, they partitioned India. You should know what type of cultural boundary that is. And they created uh, two nation states. So here we have Czechoslovakia. It turns into the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic. Here we have India. And then it turns into partitioned India, right? This is major devolution. Major devolution happens when new countries are formed, when nationalities break off because they have this idea of self-determination and they want to govern themselves. They want sovereignty. And then in a multinational state that breaks down into multiple states, turns into a nation state. Now, devolution can be peaceful or violent. Let's look at both of the examples that we just talked about. When Czechoslovakia devolved into two countries, it was peaceful. They voted to separate. In Canada, with the Quebecois, they have voted to break off and separate. It hasn't been violent. But on the other hand, in India, there was violence. After that border was created between the two countries and people had to migrate in between, there was a million deaths in like the first couple weeks or months of uh, that partition happening and there's still tension today so the idea that um, you have to understand that devolution can be peaceful and it can be violent now what happens if devolution doesn't work right what if the country devolves some power to the nationality and they're like no we don't want that. We want our own country. And then they try to break off and they try to do this major devolution thing and it doesn't, ha it doesn't work. And then violence breaks out and then they start fighting. Well, now we're turning to balkanization. And balkanization is the process where ethnic problems tear a country apart. Now look, balkanization is extreme and it's only happened in one place. In fact, you're really not going to have this as an answer unless you're talking about the specific region of the world where this happened, which we will get to in the upcoming slides. So generally, your answer for things and what you should be thinking about is devolution and how you can tell the difference between these two things because major devolution and balkanization both result in new countries being formed. But there are some specific things that only happen in balkanization. So with devolution, the original government still exists. Even though new countries are formed, that original government that decided to give those people that land in their country is still there. With balkanization, the original government no longer exists. That means that country basically just exploded into a bunch of new countries and the original government is no longer there. Finally, the process of balkanization is always violent. Always you have to have violence to consider it balkanization. So to be balkanization, it's new countries being formed, the original government no longer exists, and it has to be violent. Otherwise, it's not balkanization. So when does devolution turn to balkanization? Now we are going to look at a real life example where this is the only region in the world where it's happened, because this is considered the Balkans. That's why we call it balkanization, because this is where it happened. So in Yugoslavia, it's this old country from the USSR. It was a multinational country, five different nationalities, and tons of ethnicities. And after the fall of the USSR, Yugoslavia couldn't hold it together because they had lost their, you know, ally and, you know, communism and stuff like that. And all the different nationalities started to get this idea of self-determination and they started to go through devolution, right? They started to break off and form their own countries and everything was fine, but it eventually turns to balkanization because they couldn't keep the country together after some countries started to break off and then ethnic tensions started to rise a little bit and started competing for land. So the nationalities attempt to create a nation state for themselves because they have this idea of self-determination, but then countries like Bosnia and Serbia are left with a very multi-ethnic makeup that causes even more ethnic tension and we start to see the change from devolution and the peaceful or sometimes violent breaking off of states slowly becoming balkanization where we're going to get ethnic conflicts and the original government is no longer going to exist. 
So Macedonia, Croatia, Slovenia are formed through devolution. Those countries break off first in the story of Yugoslavia. But not all the ethnicities got their own state. So Bosnia and Serbia, Bosnia, well, Bosnia is that Bosnia and Herzegovina, that uh, country that has the pink, the green, and the yellow in it. And if you look at Bosnia, it's the one with, or I'm sorry, the one with Serbia in it, it's all that uh, magenta or pink color. But there's other ethnicities there, and they don't want them there. They want to create their own nation state. They don't want a multi-ethnic state or a multinational state anymore. So the Serbian province of Kosovo, Albania, is 90% Albanian Muslims. And Bosnia has a breakdown of a split between Bosnians, Bosnian Muslims, Serbs, and Croats. And what the Serbs and Croats come up with this idea, the Croats in Croatia, that yellow country, they want to kick the Muslims out of both Bosnia and Kosovo, respectively, and then take over those countries for themselves, basically split it up and get more land. So ethnic cleansing happens. The Bosnians and Serbs turn to ethnic cleansing, basically genocide. They want to get rid of the uh, Muslim minorities. Muslims in Bosnia and Serbia are forced out. We see a huge refugee issue. And from that, Yugoslavia, there is no more Yugoslavia. If you look, none of those countries say Yugoslavia. Um, and ultimately, you have all these countries now formed that are formed either through devolution or through the extreme ethnic cleansing and breaking up of the government of balkanization. And this stuff still is very volatile today. This only happened in the early 90s. So people are still really, really uh, sore about this. And there's still a lot of tension between the, all these newly formed countries. All right, so what do you need to know today? Look, I know there's only two things up here, but they are both very complicated and complex concepts. And we're going to go over this more in class and really break this down. So if you have questions about this, watch the video again, write them down, talk to me in class about this stuff, because what you got to know, it, straightforward, you have to understand what devolution is, the minor and major, and you have to know what balkanization is. I would have examples for all of these understand what causes these and try to use as much vocab as possible you know bring in those centripetal and centrifugal forces talk about the different types of states that exist use words like ethnicity and nationality when describing it and really try to uh, bring everything together from this unit because this really is this lesson is the culmination of all of the knowledge of the unit so as always this is bear's guide to a five and i'll see you next time